Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. The Catholic Church is timeless. While changes certainly have happened in the Church, they have developed organically, for the most part, through its long August history. One of the things that we should be concerned with is when we hear prelates discussing the need for change in the Church. And by change, I don't mean a call to sanctity for those in positions of authority and the laity to turn our back on the sins that separate us from Christ, to repent of sins, and to live a new life in Christ in accordance with what we profess to believe. That kind of change is always needed, always, throughout his, the history of the Church. Even at the times of the Church's peak of sanctifying leadership, saintly popes and college of cardinals and bishops around them who were embodiment of the example of what we need to be living in the faith. Even at that time, we always could do better. How much more true is it now in this time of darkness in the church and in the world? But that's not the kind of change that's ever called for. Today, we're talking about the other kind of change, the secular kind of change. Whenever reformers step forward and say, we need to change how the church does X, Y, or Z, take note. There's, their motives may be pure. The modernists who have upended the church in the last several decades truly believed, the majority of them did, that they were doing the work God willed them to do, that he wants them to change the church. The fruits of their labors speak otherwise, but they believe it. They believe that they are on a mission from God himself to change the church. Such is the case with synodality. And while Cardinal Robert Seurat warned us about the practical atheism of the synodalists, of the many prelates in the church who operate and think about things in a materialist way. They believe, they profess with their lips, and they believe that they are doing God's will. It's something to be wary of in our time, because we now have news that the synod of synodality is moving forward. We've known this for some time. But quietly, amidst the rumors of a banning of the traditional Mass, the chaos from the Archbishop Vigano news, and all of these other things, that the Synod on Synodality has been quietly meeting, the leaders have, and they've been working on a document called the Instrumentum Laboris. That is a working document that will guide the next Synodal meeting in October of this year. And the purpose of the Synod on Synodality is to create new structures of decision-making in the Church. I've spoken countless times on this channel about the dangers of the Synodal Way, and of, if, which is the German version of the Synod of Synodality, known only the only difference between what the Germans were doing and what the Church in Rome has been doing on the universal Church level, is that in Germany they're being much more honest with their intentions and trying to move much faster than Rome is willing to do. The whole point of synodality in general is to devolve power down from the office of the pontiff and from the bishops and to elevate the laity and the bishops themselves to being on par with the Roman pontiff. We've seen this hinted at in the proposed study document published in June about what the future of the papacy should be, to make the papacy acceptable to the Eastern Orthodox, but more, more importantly, for some reason in the document, Protestants, to get them to accept a devolution of power from the Roman pontiff and to elevate the bishops at the expense of the Roman pontiff in a way that throws out hundreds of years of theology that is developed organically about the papacy. And you see this here with this news. Turn to cath.net, which is a sort of a German and Austrian version of LifeSate News, and you get this Headline, World Synod Working Paper to be published in early July. Any day now, it will be published, and I will give the coverage here when it is published, but I promise you that what you're going to see in this document, as you're about to hear from this article, is the, the question of what is synodality itself, and how do we implement synodality? They want to develop a synodal church. They, the heads of the German Synodal Way and of the Synodal Way in Rome all talk about a Synodal Church. They refer to the Catholic Church now more often as the Synodal Church as opposed to the Catholic Church. This has the whiff of it, 
of a universal church, not universal in the Catholic sense, where anybody can become Catholic, but universal in the, you don't need to end your schisms and your heresies. You could just recognize some vague sense of authority in Roman. We can all make decisions together, regardless of whether you deny the Eucharist is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ, or other core theological differences between Catholics and Protestant groups. That's what synodality is striving for. And we see this through all the discussion groups that have happened already. The next phase of the working document is coming, and it's going to sound like mostly bureaucratic mumbo-jumbo. It really will for most people. It won't sound all that important. I want you to hear what CAF.net has to say about this. See if you can see the danger here when the church is governed by the likes of the men that we have here and how it will solidify their power forever. From the article, quote, The working paper for the final round of the World Synod of the Catholic Church on Synodality is expected to be presented at the beginning of July. The Synod Secretariat announced this on Tuesday in the Vatican. Previously, the Synod Council, which also includes the Archbishop of Vienna, Cardinal Christoph Schonborn, has discussed a first draft of the so-called Instrumentum Laboris on Sunday and Monday. The final working paper will form the basis of discussions in the autumn at the second session of the World Synod of Bishops, which is scheduled for October 2nd to 27th in the Vatican. Resolutions will also be passed that will serve as the basis for the Pope's decisions. When the Instrumentum Laboris is available, it will have already gone through several stages of consultation. From the 4th of June to the 14th, 20 theologians from four continents met in Rome to compile, compile the initial basic principles based on feedback for more than 100 bishops' conferences, the World Conference of Superiors of Religious Orders, Theological Faculties, Catholic Associations, and Individuals. The results of a meeting of priests lasting several days in Rome at the beginning of May were also taken into account. The first draft, which has now been reviewed, was also sent to around 70 people who are supposed to represent the entire spectrum of the Church, including priests, religious, lay people, and theologians from, quote, different schools of thought, as the Synod Secretariat explained. After their feedback and review by the Synod Council, a new version of the Instrumentum Laboris will now be created. After being reviewed again by the Synod Council, this will be submitted to the Pope for approval. The final version is expected to be published within the first 10 days of July. The Secretary General of the Synod, Cardinal Mario Gresh, explained that the October meeting was not about solving individual problems, but about how the question of how synodality, a new form of consultation and decision-making, could be achieved in the Church. The aim was to enter a new style and a dynamic of pastoral conversion. End quote. There is certainly more to that article than what I said there. The show notes will be at returntotradition.org if you want to take a look at it. What they have promised us for this discussion was that they will be, one of the key issues they'll just be discussing is the role of women in the Catholic Church. What role do women have in this synodal dynamic? This is where a lot of your deaconesses and deaconettes question comes from and the ordination of women more broadly. And while Francis has himself said, said no to ordaining women, he said it in such a way that leaves the door open for non-ordained deaconesses, much like you had in the ancient church, but were done away with through the development of time by the magisterial authority of the church. People have a lot of mixed feelings about that, this is, in my mind, a kicking of the door open to ordination of women itself by a future pontiff. But the Catholic Church is hierarchical in nature. It's worth remembering that. That our Lord established a church that was hierarchical, like the kingdom of heaven is hierarchical. The church is not democratic. We do not need to elevate the voices of the lady in some spirit of democracy. Doing so is extraordinarily dangerous when speaking about how this is the worst catechized generation in history, the previous generation being the worst in history before us, and it's a problem that continues to get worse. Elevating the voices of the laity to have to be given decision-making authority in the church, or to even influence decisions on doctrine and dogma, as they have said, on the discipline of the sacraments, as they have said, on the forms of the mass, as they have said, all those things come with a very real danger of destroying the faith. And instead, turning Catholicism into something that chases the spirit of the age. Just look at the polling data about what Catholics believe in the pews, about all the hot-button topics that usually form the nucleus of the culture war. And you will see that in that way, the danger to the faith is very, very real. This is an attempt to further secularize the faith. Like I said at the beginning, 
the Synod on Synodality is ongoing. When that document drops in here in the next few days, I'll be covering it for you here at this channel. So hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, so you don't miss anything on that, because the Instrumentum Laboris will probably have a lot in it that's, that's sort of masked behind this weird church-sounding but secular bureaucratic language. So let me know what you think about this, though, in the thoughts in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this? Do you, do you feel any kind of apprehension about the Synod on Synodality? Do you expect to see more of the same, this group talking at these tables where all distinctions in the hierarchy are erased, and including non-Catholics are present, making decisions for the Catholic Church? And one of the strangest displays you could ever see, could even imagine in the history of the church. Let me know what you think about this in the comments, please. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't. It certainly helps that it's sharing this on social media. That helps too. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.